Welcome back to another episode of the Budget Built Miata presented by Nankang Motorsports and Race Pack. We are finally in the home stretch here and by the end of this episode, you're gonna see this thing running and driving. Finally, time to say goodbye to our 17 inch fast wheels wrapped in our new favorite drift tire. Not really, these are Riken Raptors, which are, I guess a summer tire. I don't really even know what they are, but. They're a uh, cheap tire. They are a cheap summer tire, I think. And obviously, you know what, it's not a bad looking wheel. They don't look terrible on the car, but to us, a 15 looks much more appropriate on this car, especially for motorsport. The downside to a big 17 like this is that you've got a much taller wheel and tire package, which is really gonna hurt acceleration. On a stock powered Miata, the last thing you wanna do is hurt acceleration. And it's also going to be heavier than a 15 inch wheel and tire package. Although this is a fairly narrow wheel and tire, so maybe it's not going to be that much heavier than what we're changing to, but let's find out everyone. We've got our trusty uh, bungee cord and uh, fish scale here that uh, Pete no doubt bought on Amazon. Is that where you got this thing, Pete? Uh, you know what? I don't even know DP, but uh, I think it's used for luggage. <laughs> for luggage, okay. 38.5 or 6, let's call it. Hold on, it's going to lock. 38.4. All right. All right. It's actually lighter than I thought it would be, but really, I think it's less about weight and more about rolling diameter. And this is just too tall and frankly not the greatest look in the world. Although, if you want to buy these, you can, uh, you can email us at uh, mark at savagegeese.com and uh, you can buy these for a really good deal. And on the left, this is our new wheel and tire package, which as you can see is significantly wider than what we've taken off the car and also significantly shorter. So uh, we are gaining some acceleration and a whole bunch of cornering grip by going to this shorter and wider wheel and tire package, but also obviously a much stickier tire compound. But before I talk about the tire, let's talk about the wheel, which is Koenig's new free form 10 spoke wheel. This is part of their flow form lineup of wheels, which is their sort of highest performing wheel. If you guys don't know what uh, flow forming is, it's a manufacturing method that has a lot of the same advantages of a forged wheel, meaning they're light and strong and they have excellent uh, deformation characteristics, but at a significantly lower production cost than a forged wheel. So you get a light, strong wheel for a lot less money than a forged wheel. Um, I, as a matter of fact, I wrote a whole story on our website about cast versus flow forming versus forged wheels. So if you, if you want to know more about that, jump on our website and do a quick search and you'll find that story. I love this new finish, by the way. This is called Radium Bronze, which has kind of got like this polished face on a bronze yeah, finish. Yeah, it looks really good. It looks really neat. I think it's going to look kind of cool, really have good contrast to the silver of the Miata. Um, this is a 15 by 8 plus 25, by the way. We could have gone wider. They actually offered this in a 15 by 10 which is seriously wide and you can fit those on Miatas, although I suspect we would have needed flares at that point. And we decided we wanted to stick with a more bolt-on wheel and tire package that wasn't crazy wide and crazy grippy because we want this car to be fun to drive, not like on rails where it's really hard to break it loose. We want it to move around and kind of challenge the driver to get the most out of it during their hot laps. So we, and that's another reason why we, we didn't go with Nankang's AR1 semi-slicks, which you guys would have seen us do a, a review on in our 100 treadwear tire video. If you hadn't seen that, go check it out. That AR1 is a really fast tire, and uh, we suspect this NS2R, which is their more street-oriented uh, tire in a ultra-high performance, is going to be just as quick, too. And uh, as you can see, it has got a lot of contact here. There isn't, there isn't a lot of uh, tread pattern, so you get a lot of rubber on the ground. It is an asymmetrical tread pattern, so you get good uh, water drainage, um, you know, good street ability out of it. It's got these, these circumferential grooves, which will add stability at high speed and again, help evacuate water. But these big, stable shoulder blocks is really what we're all about. It's gonna give us that, that lateral grip, that, you know, good feel in the corners. This is their new 200 Treadwear offering, by the way. They offered this in a 120 and a 180 for quite a while, but this is a new 200 Treadwear version, obviously targeted at you 200 Treadwear guys in street class, uh, autocross, or time attack series. As a matter of fact, our buddy Jackie Ding is racing on these now in uh, Global Time Attack and Grid Life. And I think he may be one of the YouTubers that we invite up here to take this thing for a rip, because uh, Jackie's a really good guy and he's darn fast in that S2000, so it'll be neat to see him give it a go in the Miata. 
I'm not sure who we put him up against, VT. We gotta find maybe a, a contrasting driver, maybe Riley Sexsmith, drifter versus grip guy. That might be kind of fun. Maybe, yeah. Let us know in the comments who you'd like us to see put up uh, head to head versus Jackie. Back to the uh, Nankang NS2Rs. We went with a 205 5015. And again, we could have gone wider. They make these in a 225. They make them in sizes from 13s all the way up to 18s. But again, our, our, our thinking was to not go too wide and too sticky on the tire because we want people to be able to play with it at the limit. We also want people to spin out. We want to put some guys in here that aren't track guys and uh, let them discover their limits on a tire that's going to have a more forgiving breakaway characteristic. Usually with a really grippy semi-slick, when you dr overdrive the tire, it loses grip like that. Where with a street tire, you're going to be more forgiving. That, that, that peak grip curve is flatter, so when, it, when you overdrive it, it sort of starts to slide more gradually. That's our hope with this. Before we bolt these up, let's give them a quick uh, weigh with our scale here, our highly accurate science grade scale. I mean, it works. Designed it's, it's for pretty accurate. Weighing your groceries. All right, if I zeroed this thing out, I think I have. Let's see what we get here, PT. Oh, she's lighter. She's real light. 53.7, that's like almost three pounds lighter. Not bad. Three pounds is a fair bit to save, especially when you're talking about you know, rotating unsprung mass and all that stuff that people like to nerd out about. But really, I'm all about the wider and the shorter. That's what Miatas need. We can't put these hideous, rusted, open-ended nuts on these brand new wheels. So, he went to his stash and grabbed these SR45Rs, which uh, we got from Mackin Industries. They, they carry all kinds of high quality lug nuts and wheels and distribute all kinds of other good stuff. Like, that cool little conical uh, Oh, the, uh, the, the floating, what do you call this? Like the base of the, the nut is floating? Taper, I, think. I don't even know. It, is, it is a tapered yeah. style, but, but yeah, it it's, is, a, yeah, floater, it's a floater, so it yeah. won't score the inside yeah. of the... Very baller. Yeah, I'm not Only sure. Only the best for the Miata. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're going big on the lug nuts here. So let's torque these down, get all four of them on here and see how this thing looks. Ooh, damn. MDP. It looks good, huh? It looks real good. You know what? I, I really love the concave on yeah. these wheels, man. It just adds a whole new level of aggression to this Miata. Uh, I am noticing, I, I mean, are we gonna stay at this ride height? This uh, is it's kind of high, right high. Now. Yeah, no, that's... But I mean, at the same time, we, we don't want it like super low, do we? No. I don't know. I, I don't know. I but it, anyways, here's the thing. I can already tell if we have any type of real compression, the lip here, mm -hmm. which is already kind of been folded out right here, yeah. needs to be folded in. So I think it is time for the fender roller. If you've never used a fender roller before, it's actually an exceptional tool to help clearance your fenders, but remember you do need heat. Heat is kind of key to not cracking your paint. There's an art to this. I'm not exceptionally good at it because I don't do a lot of it. But the name of the game is slow and steady. And unfortunately with this car, um, the clearance on the fender is pretty short. This tool is almost too big for it. But what I'm gonna do is just start off slow here and keep rolling it. There we have it, fender is rolled. Although I've gotta say, this area here, the paint cracked, it was a little rusty. And um, there's a bunch of stitch welds here that don't necessarily make it very roller friendly. So I had uh, a little bit of work to get around that. But I think with the way it is now rolled up there, we should have plenty of clearance by the looks of it, we do. So I think we're gonna be A-OK. -okay. So let's drop this thing down one more time, have a look at it, and we'll know for sure. Looks like we've got plenty of clearance right now. So I think that is a job well done. I'm gonna do the other side, and while I do that, DP's going to adjust the ride height here, because I think we're gonna come down about half an inch. Right height all around, measured from the center bore of the wheel to the fender lip. 
There's lots of debate on the internet whether that's the most accurate way or if it's better to go from the pinch welds to the ground. In this case, we couldn't go from the pinch welds to the ground because we got the quick jack underneath there. So center board of the thinner lips close enough and we set it to 12 and a half all the way around. There's lots of discussion about how to set up Miatas. Most of the guys on the forums seem to end up between about 12 and a quarter and 13 inch ride height using this measurement method. Some like a little bit of forward rake, some don't like any rake. A little bit of forward rake will loosen up the rear end, make it more prone to rotating it. Having it level will reduce oversteer a bit and you can even use reverse rake like we did on the AS2000 to try to tame the rear end. We want this car to oversteer some, so maybe I could have put a bit of rake into it, but that's stuff we could play around with later once Pete and I get out to the track and do some, uh, some shakedown laps to see how this thing is working. Since we're on a budget here with this car, I promised myself I wouldn't get into a lot of cosmetic mods on this car. I thought about putting in like cool side skirts, doing some vents and all this neat stuff that people do to Miatas. But in the end, I said, you know what? There's one thing that I'm gonna add to this car. And that is a front lip because the front end here is just dying for something. It's such a bubbly bumper here, right DP? Yeah. So of course, my latest eBay purchase is this lip and um, it actually looks like it's gonna fit pretty well and more so I think it's gonna look really neat it comes with uh, a bunch of sheet metal screws however I'm gonna add some 3m tape just to kind of like bond this thing up here and uh, once we get this on we're gonna show you fitment I've got to say, this is probably the best fitting eBay lip I have ever installed. Ooh. We still had to struggle with that a little bit, but man, look at the gaps are pretty damn good, especially on that side. They're kind of beautiful. So I personally also really like this lip. I think it gives the car a little more aggressive front end look. It's really, really nice. And I think it's time we just slow down for a second and admire just the look of this car because it is absolutely killer. 